All right, Lori Vallow, the doomsday mom, took a hit at trial from her best friend today. Melanie Gibb took the stand along with audio tape of a highly incriminating phone call. Let's bring in podcaster Gigi McKelvey, who's not just great at analysis. She is a witness to the proceedings. She's in the courtroom. The only eyes and ears you're going to get because there are no cameras. With high-profile defense attorney Mark Aragos and former prosecutor and famed defender Mark O'Mara. The two Marks. I'll be more specific. Gigi, I start with you. Uh, how You told me yesterday that you know this was going to be the beginning of a litany. Garagos said the same thing. Um, you guys were right. So, um, before we play this call, what is it about? The call was recorded by Melanie Gibb back in November of 2019 where Chad and Lori were in Hawaii and they had been married and she was asking them, why did you tell the police I had JJ? You're making me look weird. Well, I mean, that's not hard to do with this whole religion thing. But it, so essentially she's just asking her, why did you lie and put me in that position? Then they kind of have a religious scripture. I know you are, but what am I? That kind of goes on for a while. But, you know, it, it, Lori flat out says in this recording, I know where JJ is. He's safe. He's happy. And Alex doesn't know where he is. That's going to come back to bite her. Mm. Let's hear it. Well, I was wondering why you told the police why he was with me. I just needed to use, have somebody that I, so I wouldn't have to tell them where he really was because they were going to tell Kay where he is. Yeah. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. I'm just worried for you guys because... You know, he's missing, and, you know... I know exactly where he is. He's perfectly okay. fine. I don't know what your intention is on this phone call, well, but with all my heart, and I have forever, and well, I will always see you. I appreciate those words, but if you really loved me, you wouldn't have told the police that I had Jeju with me. That's not, that's not what a friend does. I did exactly what I felt the Lord was instructing me to do. One of the most dangerous forms of proselytizing is when people use some divine authority uh, to justify the worst of us. Now, Gigi, so that we're straight on the timeline here, is there any chance that her son was okay at that time? No. Unfortunately, JJ and Tally both were dead and buried in Chad Daybell's backyard at that point of the phone call. So, no, there was no chance. Uh, the kids were already dead by the time Kay called in the welfare check. They were killed in September 2019. Wasn't discovered until November of 2019 that they were even missing. Uh, Mark Aragos, the defense wanted to get this thrown out. On what good basis? Well, I, there's all kinds of uh, arguments you could make. The problem is, is that the mother of the judge has not been born that's going to exclude it in a case involving the death of two young people. I hate to be a cynic, but the, whether you're going to argue that it was an un unconsensual taping and uh, they're going to come back and say, okay, so what? It's a declaration against penal interest. It's a, it's a pretty damning tape. I mean, there's no... Uh, if, ifs and buts about it. Uh, I assume that there's other things that could be said, but you're going to have to, the, this is something that needs a lot of explaining and jurors are going to put a lot of credence in this because there's basically, how could you, how could you tell them that you've gotten me in trouble is something that a juror is, it's going to resonate with most jurors. All right, so now that is the elephant in the room, okay? The elephant in the room is how the jury is going to take what is going to become painfully obvious, all right? So let's start with the present sense impression of today, which was a step down the road of damnation for her. And then I'm coming to you, O'Mara, about how the prosecution is going to deal with that. So, Gigi, when the jury heard this phone call, um, what was their reaction from what you could tell? Oh, Chris, watching the progression of the jurors' faces from just going from a detective on the stand first thing this morning to about five minutes into Melanie Gibbs' testimony, they, their faces told stories. I think this jury truly doesn't know much about this case. They were shocked. They were bewildered. They were just stoic. Some had their mouths open. I mean, I think that this jury really today got a rude awakening as to why they're here and what drove these murders.
Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.